Hey guys, in this video, we are going to talk about inverted T-beams and concrete hollow blocks. Together, these two materials are used to make a beam and block slab. This is a bit different from flat beams and concrete hollow blocks, and I'll make a video comparing uh, the two technologies, inverted T-beams versus flat beams. So in this video, I'll try to answer some questions that you've been asking me over the years about inverted T-beams. Questions such as, are they strong? Are they durable? Are they affordable? Among others. I'm Nick Mwema from Property Noma and we can start by talking about inverted T-beams. T-beams get their name from the shape of their sectional area. You can see it roughly resembles the letter T. They're also called inverted T-beams because that's how they are installed on site during construction. T-beams belong to the larger precast concrete materials. Precast concrete simply means the concrete that has been prepared at a factory under specialized conditions. So in our case, the T-beams are manufactured at a factory and once they are ready, they are shipped to your site. Now this is different to the ring beams that are prepared on site. In fact, your ring beams are called in situ concrete ring beams to differentiate them from precast T beams. T beams are made of class 60 of concrete. Concrete has several classes, and the lower the number, the lower the strength of that concrete. So we have classes such as class 20, class 25, class 30, all the way to our case, class 60 for the T beams. So class 60 is a high strength concrete class meaning the T-beams are strong and durable. Inside the T-beams are four steel tendons. These steel tendons have been stretched to such a high degree to achieve a very high tensile strength. This process is known as pre-stressing the T-beams. By using class 60 of concrete and undergoing the pre-stressing procedure, we ensure that the T-beams are strong enough to support the loads imposed on your suspended slab. In other words, the T-beams are made strong enough to both support themselves and the weight of your finished slab. When it comes to dimensions, the depth of the T-beam is the most important to look out for. You will find T-beams of varying depths of 150 millimeters, 225 millimeters, or 250 millimeters. The 150 mm deep T-beam is the most common beam that you will use for your upcoming house project. The 150 mm deep T-beam is used to build suspended slabs or flat roofs. The 225 mm deep T-beam is used in commercial or industrial projects for heavy duty applications. You can also use this beam if you want longer spans for your slab. And finally, the 250 mm deep beam is used to build suspended foundations. A unique feature of T-beams is how they are designed to be self-supporting. They span from one ring to the next ring beam without any support from timber props. This is not possible with the conventional method and with flat beams. That's an advantage as it saves you the cost of buying timber props for your project. Concrete hollow blocks work hand in hand with the inverted T-beams. They are used as infill blocks to plug the gaps between each T-beam. They are hollow to reduce their dead weights and to allow for plumbing and electrical conduits to pass through. They are usually 400 millimeters wide which means the T-beams have to be placed 400 millimeters apart for the hollow blocks to fit snugly in between. They are made using a high pressure hydraulic press and usually weigh between 10 to 15 kgs per block. Once the blocks are laid between the T-beams, you achieve an immediate working surface. This eliminates the need for steel trappers that are used in the conventional method. Before you order the T-beams and blocks to your site, you have to submit your drawing plans to the company that will supply you with them. From your plan, 
they'll determine the spans for each room of your house. The spans are from one ring beam to the next ring beam. This is important because with beam and block technology, the shorter span of a room is always used. For example, let's say you have a room in your house that measures 4.5 meters long and 3 meters wide. The shortest span here is 3 meters, and that is what will be used to make a quotation for that particular room. A site visit by the supplier's technician is also very important to ensure that the dimensions of each room is taken properly before the T-beams are cut. Keep in mind that the T-beams are cut according to the shortest spans of each room, so the technician has to take this information back to the factory before your T-beams are prepared. This is done to minimize mistakes, avoid extra costs, and to eliminate wastage of beams. Also, before the T-beams and blocks are brought to your site, ensure the columns and ring beams of your house have already been casted and cured. Once that is done, you can now start installing the T-beams and concrete hollow blocks. The T-beams are placed in an inverted position and you can see the chamfered edges. These chamfers will support the hollow blocks in between them. The first beam is placed 400 millimeters away from the ring beam and the hollow blocks are placed in between. This process continues all the way to the other side of the room. You can see how quickly you can achieve a working surface with beam and block tech. For this particular project, the span of the entire slab is 117 square meters. All the T-beams and blocks were placed within a day. That is incredibly fast. So if saving time is an important factor for you, please take your time and consider using beam and block technology for your upcoming project. The plumbing and electrical conduits are passed through the hollow blocks at their specific points. Afterwards, the BRC mesh is laid on top to provide tensile strength for the concrete topping. The recommended BRC mesh to use is BRC A142. A 50 to 75 millimeter concrete topping is added on top of the T-beams and blocks and the BRC mesh. This concrete will cover all the gaps between the beams and blocks and provide a solid floor. If the slab is a flat roof, a gentle slope of 1 is to 4 or less is used to ensure water flows out smoothly to the specific exit points. Waterproofing materials are added to ensure the concrete topping is waterproof. At the time of making this video, the cost of T-beams and blocks alone is between 3,200 Kenyan shillings to 3,600 Kenyan shillings per square meter. This variation of cost depends on the company that you'll buy your T-beams from. In this cost, I've not included the cost of transport and labor per square meter. But roughly speaking, when you include transport and labor, expect an estimated cost of 4,000 shillings and above per square meter. In Kenya, you can get your T-beams and blocks from Echo Concrete, Motherland Concrete and Logistics, and Flodeco Kenya. You can visit their offices to get a quotation for your T-beam and block slab. As a disclaimer, this is not a sponsored video, and none of those companies have sponsored this video. Please do your research before visiting any of those companies. Let's talk about the pros and cons of a T-beam and block slab. We'll start with the pros. The first pro is the speed of installation. I'll use an example. We have this project uh, where the client wanted to build a maisonette, but currently has built the ground floor to act as a bungalow. She will extend her house later on into a maisonette. So we have this slab that will act as the flat roof of her house. The entire size of that slab is 117 square meters and it was installed within a day. The entire T-beams and blocks that were needed for that slab were put in place within a day. So you can see how speedy that is. That means you get a walking surface almost immediately and within a day you are able to walk on top of that slab. Now, the following day is when 
uh, the concrete topping was poured to create now a screed level uh, for the flat roof. So you can see how quick that is. So if time is against you and would like to have a finished concrete slab uh, done quickly, then go for inverted T-beams and blocks. Now the second pro is the quality of the slab. You get a very high quality concrete slab when you use uh, T-beams and blocks. That's because, like I said before, T-beams are made of class 60 of concrete, which is a high strength concrete grade. And also the steel inside them is stretched or pre-stressed to such a high level that they achieve a high tensile strength. So together, that makes T-beams extremely strong and durable. And that ensures that you get a high quality concrete slab. The third pro is the regulation of noise. And this is because of the hollow cores uh, within the concrete hollow blocks. Because of the hollow cores where air is trapped in between, so it creates uh, some sort of break uh, in between the monolithic slab uh, once it's casted. This ensures that noise does, doesn't penetrate from the top uh, to the bottom, for example. The fourth pro is the easy installation of T-beams. Because they're placed 400 millimeters apart, it's easy to predict uh, how to space the T-beams across the span of a room because uh, the width of one concrete hollow block is 400 millimeters. So the fundies have to ensure that they place 400 millimeters apart the T-beams and in between they place the hollow blocks. So the fundies and also the casual laborers are able to do their work quickly and with little supervision. The fourth advantage with T-beams is the lack of timber supports uh, to support them. This is unlike the case with uh, flat beams and the conventional method. With T-beams, they're designed to be self-supporting. You just place them from one ring beam to the other ring beam, and in between, there's nothing to support them. So that means you save on the money that you would have used to buy timber props if you had used flat beams or if you had used uh, the conventional method. That's a big money saver for you. The last pro is about the reduction of theft. Here, the T-beams have been cut according to the spans of your room, specifically the shorter spans of all the rooms of your house. That means for a thief to come in and take some of your T-beams, they have to exactly match uh, the other project that they would like to take them to. So that makes it highly unlikely for thieves to come in, steal your T-beams and go away with them. I'm saying this point because there's a lot of theft that goes on, especially with steel, with the ribbers uh, in the conventional method. Steel ribbers are a highly prized product and they can be easily stolen to go to another project. So with T-beams, because they have been cut to the exact dimensions of, of your rooms, that makes them applicable to only your project. Now, let's talk about the cons of a T-beam and block slab. The first con is the cost of T-beams. Remember, T-beams are made of class 60 of concrete, which, like I said before, is a high strength grade of concrete. That means the materials needed to make the T-beams cost more than the materials needed to make flat beams. Because of the cost of the materials, that means the price of T-beams are higher than, that, than those of flat beams. So if you're comparing the two technologies in terms of price, just know that flat beams cost less than T-beams. The second con is the slow adoption rate of T-beams uh, within the country. Because T-beams are a relatively new technology in Kenya, not many projects have adopted using them. It's highly unlikely that you walk into a site and you find them using T-beams for their slabs. Most likely, you'll find that project using the conventional method because that's what people know, that's what fundies know, and that's what people are familiar with. Now, that being said, uh, there's that slow adoption rate within the country. More and more people are learning about T-beams and adopting them for their projects. And because of the speed of installation, that really, really, really remains a, a big advantage uh, of T-beams when you compare it to the conventional slab.
the third cone is the weight of T beams. T beams weigh more than flat beams when you compare the two technologies. So if weight is something that you are particularly sensitive to, know that T beams weigh more than flat beams. As I conclude, I hope I've been able to bring out the main talking points about inverted T beams and concrete hollow blocks. You've been able to understand how they are installed and how they are used to quickly build a beam and block slab. In another video, I'll talk about flat beams and compare them to inverted T beams because they are both beam and block technologies. Which is the better option for you as you're about to start building your concrete slabs? You can watch that video up next. Thank <laughs> you.